put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. If the video is simply too long for you, I did record a shorter version and the link is in the description box. Red Orchestra 4145. The Eastern Front was where 30 million of an estimated 70 million deaths occurred in World War II. The climate was among the harshest. The ruins could be completely abandoned, but they could also hold enemy forces. It was one of the places where it was the most clear, although unfortunately not to the people in charge of sending troops there, that war, far from being honorable and a worthy way to die, is a chaotic, bloody, nasty undertaking. And the people who keep it going are seldom the people who are on the front lines. And this game puts you right there, and that really is the, the key to de determining if you're going to like this game or not. While I won't claim that the game is perfect, this is a bit of a theme with the negative reviews. This is this is not a game for everyone and a lot of the negative a lot of the complaints that have been made or criticism I should say that have been made against this game are that it's it doesn't really adhere to typical FPS standards and Again, so, some, of the, some of the criticisms against the game are fair, but don't go in expecting typical FPS. If you, if you are after typical FPS, this is not the game for you. But if you do belong in the audience, in the intended audience for this, then it's spot on. And let's be honest, there are plenty of straight FPS games out there. I have no problem with that, with the, you know, overall genre, but I do find that it's it's noteworthy when a good game gets made in that that is aimed at a more specific audience. This is... I, I, I can start with the, the environments. As already said, it's, there's a number of ruins and, you know, you go to different areas of the Eastern Front, usually the Eastern Front. There are some, you know, landmarks that... One, one level features the Reichstag, which I'm fairly certain was back in, you know, Germany, but yeah. I, it's it's quite forgivable because it looks gorgeous. It's rendered in such vivid detail. It looks just like the the real thing. And and yeah, in general, there there are some historic landmarks and the the amount of research and effort put into making sure that this looked exactly like the real thing is tremendous. You, you'll go to, the, there's, you know, there, there are churches, you'll go through villages, cities, the, there are farms with these vast fields of grain, and, you know, the, among the, the farm areas, there might be a couple of 
you know, farm animals like horses, cows, and they'll literally just be lying there dead. And it's it's these little pieces of sort of real life, a, a peaceful coexistence of, you know, th there used to be people here. This used to be a place where people just went about their business. And now, that's that's what's left. You know, the, some of the buildings are still standing, and there might be some dead animals there. And you don't even know if this is the result of... I mean, maybe they were killed by shrapnel from a nearby bombing. Maybe they were gunned down by, you know... The, the invading force. Maybe the farmer knew he couldn't get the animals away in time and he felt that it would be more merciful to to kill them before he fled or maybe before he took his own life. Knowing that, you know, where, where do you even go? Your, your land is being invaded. Maybe he didn't have time to get away, and this this uncertainty and the fact that it's not at all exploitative because it's just there, and whether you you know th these are the things that I get to think of when I see dead animals in form. Maybe you think of completely different things. Maybe you don't particularly notice it at all, but it's there and. It's, you know, to an extent, what you get out of this game is what you bring to it. And if you do go in, you know, with, with a... <coughs> excuse me, with... You know, it's just thinking about the, the horrors of war, then it will be a very powerful experience. And if you just go in, you know, expecting intense combat action, then that's what you get out of it. It doesn't it doesn't push anything on you that you know, other than that. Just the the, the gameplay, which I will get into. And yeah, it just it creates this effective, bleak, isolated and I don't know if claustrophobic is quite the word, but just a, a fear of everything around you because there's really no way to know. If, if what you're looking at is debris or just a, a you know, the debris from an earlier fight, you know, is, is the vehicle you're looking at, is it actually just, you know, left there by earlier conflict, or is is it actually an enemy of yours just remaining still? And at, at first I thought that this might just be until you learn the levels, but some actually hide their tank behind debris, or, or near, you know, a, yeah, debris from earlier combat, so you you might not know, and until you, if, if you're close enough, maybe you hear the the tank, the, the cannon adjusting its sights, maybe you hear some machine gun fire that, you know, that, that just barely misses you. Maybe you don't hear anything at all. Either way, you're probably dead if you didn't know that there was an enemy tank there. You, you have to have an extremely good sense of, of what is going on. Situ, situ, situational awareness, to quote the perfect getaway. And that's yeah, that's that's really the the core here. You you don't really get second chances 
in in this game, if if you didn't know that there was an enemy there, the way you find out is probably that he kills you. And you won't even necessarily know exactly who killed you. It's it's a very effectively disorienting game, and the fact that you can literally hear and and get motion blur from like an explosion near you, or just in general something firing near you. If if you're not the one firing the gun and it's relatively close to you, yeah, it's gonna cause some some motion blur. You know, it's going to actually yeah, like in real life, it it's startling because you didn't, you know, when, when it's your own gun, you, you knew what was coming. You were prepared for it. And you've trained with the gun, so you know what to expect. But when it's not, it is just that. And, and at first, it's going to be overpowering. It's going to take some getting used to before, you, before you're any good, any, before you're worth anything in the, the fighting, really. And that's the 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 tension is immense. Like the the fact that it's quiet right now doesn't mean that you can't be dead in a second. For for one thing, like like I already mentioned, the the hiding tank. Maybe maybe it's a sniper. Maybe it's someone hiding in ruins. Maybe it's an artillery strike. And, uh, yes, I, I think I will segue into the ar artillery strikes are basically that I believe it's just the squad leader who can call this in. And the, as, as is, you know, fairly familiar to people who play first person shooters specifically set in like, you know, some war, some, some famous war and such, yeah. It's divided into classes. It's very specific when, what one class can and what others can't. If, if you're not a tank commander or a tank crewman, you can't operate a tank. Plain and simple. You can pick up some guns dropped by others, but, you know, and often you'll have to drop your own gun in exchange for it. But, yeah. And so, yeah, the, the and these classes, of course, have a set number of, you know, like, I think Rifleman is literally the only, the only class where you can just keep adding to, to that. And note that there are two different Rifleman classes, and the semi-auto Rifleman is the one there's a limit to. The regular rifleman, you literally have, you know, the, the, it's the bolt action rifle. You have to get the shell out every single shot you fire, so you really don't want to miss. Because if you do, you just gave away your position to what it, whoever you were shooting at, and now you have to spend like a full second before you can fire again. Now, it, but. One thing that's quite nice in this is you choose when to do that. So, you know, if you want to go at it with, you know, a handgun, or if you just want to run in the opposite direction, whatever, you can do that. It's only the next time you bring out the rifle and then click fire that he'll actually eject the shell. And that goes for any weapon that needs that kind of thing. Now, yes, the... the squad leader, literally, you know, can bring up binoculars and with those he can mark where he wants an artillery strike and then someone just has to, it doesn't even have to be the squad leader, someone just has to radio those coordinates in and there are a number of radios around a, you know, some, some of the maps, not, not all of them. Now, the and, and other than that, there will be some set, you know, guns. Some, some of them to be used, some of them just to, you know... Yeah, some, some of them just to heighten the realism. Mortars and, 
you know, artillery cannons and the like. I should point out, earlier I mentioned debris and the opportunity to hide behind it. I earlier reviewed the game Sniper Elite, and in that game, once you get a clear look on an enemy vehicle, you can tell if it's destroyed or not. Like, the cannon will be all messed up, or, you know, it'll be slightly tilted, like part of it got blown, like, like let's say the left part of the tank got blown up, so it's kind of, you know, yeah, tilted because of that. That doesn't really happen in this. A, a vehicle can look like it's in one piece until you just notice that one part of it that isn't quite in one piece. Like, part of the, you know, the tank tread will have come off. And, I mean, that does make the tank unusable, that, that, or it, it makes it immobile. So, they're going to have abandoned it after that point. So, debris, tank debris might literally be what looks like a fully operational tank until you notice that one thing that's a little bit off. So, yeah, it's, it's very easy to... And, and note that you don't always have binoculars. So, if something's far away, maybe it's an enemy, but maybe it's something else that just happens to look like. And, once again, hesitation can get you killed, and shooting at something that isn't actually an enemy, or missing, gives away your position. Now, it's also... The, the way to tell machine gun fire is that you can see the tracers. You can't see the actual bullets, because how could you? They fly so fast. You, you can never actually see bullets flying through the air in this. You can see tracers from machine guns, because that's what they use to tell, you know, what am, where exactly am I hitting, and if something hits near you, you'll hear, like, the impact or ricochet or the like. And, yeah, that's that's about it. You, you can hear movement of vehicles and, you know, explosions and the like, and yeah, that's... You, you don't have an, an, a directional, directional indicator from when you get hit. You get hit, you, you, you got hit. It, you, you can maybe use the sound if, you know... Yeah, if, if it's... if what was fired gives off a sound when it hits, or if it's like a submachine gun that was used and one of the bullets hit, probably a few of them didn't, and you can try to use that to, to locate. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, the... The game also has, you know, several of the levels have, like, foxholes, probably free of atheism, am I right? And trenches and the like, and this really captures the, the terror of, yeah, occupying a trench or a foxhole, because really, it could get hit with an artillery strike any minute. You don't know that artillery strike is going to hit until you're either dead because of it or you hear an explosion just near you. I literally at one point was rushing with my team to get to, you know, where we need to go to defend and suddenly an artillery strike. And this is, you know, it ca it's called in from like the, the, the air, you know, the planes will drop the and literally everyone in front of me blew up and I'm just standing there and it's, I, I was just out of range of it but that, that's it and you know it's just it's it's a terrifying thing to see and yeah it's 
you know, you, you don't know if something's going to suddenly explode near you, or if, and, and just occupying, you know, maybe, maybe you just, maybe you're, you're keeping watch, maybe you are sitting there with a machine gun to, to hold down the line, and, you know, any second you could spot an enemy or you could get killed by an enemy you didn't quite manage to see. Now, the, the fighting can be both tight and far away. Like, sometimes you'll literally be going through houses that are... Some of them are largely still standing. And you'll literally be going through rooms and up and down stairs and all this... And literally the next room could hold an enemy. And you don't have enough grenades to just you know, clear every room like that. You'll, you'll have like, a, you know, a handful, two or three. And sometimes it is extremely far away and literally even, you know, using binoculars or sniper, you'll just barely be able to see the enemy from as far away as it is. And that's, that's part of, that's, that's something they did great, excuse me, in this. The maps are often very large, which allows you to flank the enemy position because a lot of the objectives will be like towards the middle, both horizontally and vertically. Some of the very first or very last objectives will be on the edge vertically, so that makes a lot less opportunity for flankings, which of course makes it more interesting. And, you know, that particular situation will be extremely difficult then. Now, the, and, and the, the fighting will intensify because there are fewer access points. So, in the few access points, the fighting will be more intense. It also allows for very effective sniping. Uh, a sniper in a tower can be an extremely powerful force in this. And the and and at the same time, you may have to go a bit of a distance before you can really make a difference in the battle. And that also really heightens the stakes for when you, you really do not want to die in this game. It's, you know, the, the, when, when you play your, your average first person shooter, and again, I'm not really saying that this is a bad thing, but in a lot of them, with the maps not quite so large as in this, it won't take you that long to get back into the action, but in this, you might be quite a bit away from where the, the fighting's going on. And this can mean that, you know, it's going to take a while for you to get back there. Especially if you're completely on foot. And at the same time, it might mean that you're just far enough away that you can, you know, that it really gives you an option. You don't have to run away from the action to get into a better position. Now, the I've already mentioned some that this is not exploitative. The, there is blood and gore, and it can be very... It's again, it's very realistic. Like, I, I mentioned the artillery strike right in front of it. It just destroyed them, you know. The, and, and, yeah, explosions will really just completely destroy the, the body of whoever, but it's not exploitative, it's not, you know, Quake, for example, and, yeah, so, before you go for the full multiplayer, you may want to use the practice mode, which is an offline 
bot-driven mode, which it's, it's basically the same as the main game, just only bots. And this has received some complaints because the AI, especially when dealing with tanks, sometimes could be better. And I personally find that the there are a few things that are in such things there, there are a few things you should learn that require you getting into very rare situations. And I find that it would be good if the game basically had a, a training wheels mode where you can make all the mistakes you may need to early on. That's, that's my philosophy for when you get into a new game, make all the mistakes off the get-go so you know where the minimum and maximum are. You know, you don't want to suddenly be making a big mistake near the end of the game that requires you to get accustomed to something that you didn't realize was an issue or could be an issue and yeah and this some of some of these things are a bit too rare for you to just be going through just a regular mode and i feel like you know these are things that the soldier would have been trained in before getting into battle You'll, you'll spend a lot of time trying to get the where to aim on a tank right. Because, like I said, this is, this is not a game that tells you a lot. So when you shoot with the, yeah, with, with an anti-tank, weapon, it, the, the fact that you hit it won't necessarily mean that you destroy it and you know the fact that you didn't destroy it after you shot, you won't necessarily even be able to tell if you hit it. That doesn't mean that you missed it, it might just mean that you shot somewhere where it didn't quite work out and this is where I'm, I feel like they should have a mode where you know you can just constantly be shooting at tanks, maybe even without them shooting back, and just maybe even have it tell you, okay, the shot you just, you know, the shot you just got off, yeah, it hit, but it didn't do too much damage because of this and that. And the, this is especially an issue because I found that you don't, that often get to use the well-known Panzerfaust. You usually have to just use... I don't remember exactly... It's, it's like PTRD or something like that. And it's... It, it looks like a giant rifle. And basically... And, and it's one of these, you know, gotta load a new shell into it after every hit and after every shot and yeah you can be firing off a lot with it not doing too much and with you not necessarily knowing why and if you're simultaneously dealing with all these other things it's a bit it's a bit much to have to figure out all these different things now, the conflict is, of course, between the Axis forces and the Soviets, and I'll probably be referring to the Soviets as allied, as the game itself does. There is a steep learning curve, maybe especially when compared to your typical FPS, but you also really don't want to make this the first game you play that requires good hand-to-eye coordination. Again, it's it's not really a game you want to practice on for for that. 
there are not a ton of servers today, and I think the basically you you'll wanna get a group of friends together maybe, and I've also heard that there are more people on the on the second game, so some will want to skip this entirely. The game is really addictive. The whether you're doing well or or not, it's yeah, just just the atmosphere, the the way it's so immersing really has has you coming back and has you wanting more. The the when when real life eventually just you know, intrudes and you have to stop playing, it's often quite irritating. <laughs> the game has a heavy focus on teamwork. Like I said, the, the, you know, the lone sniper in a tower can be extremely effective, but at the same time, if the, you know, if, if you are spread in all different, if, if you don't coordinate, it might, you know, it can go really wrong really fast because the other team, if they coordinate, can be highly effective against forces spread too much. And at the same time, you don't want to make the mistake of both world wars of running too tightly together because you're an easy mark for some kind of explosive weapon, and there are a number of those in this game. Now, one thing that I found you really miss in this game is a sort of vault or climb obstacle key or function. This, I, I drawing a comparison I say, you know, Max Payne 3 has that, and it can be really useful to just very quickly, rather than having to circle around, just climbing over something. And I'm not talking about, you know, straight up climbing up, but I'm, I'm talking about the, the kind of thing where if you put your hand on it and, you know, arch your leg over, it's not going to take you that much effort or that many seconds to get over. And in this game, having to circle around, sometimes it'll literally be impossible, and just in general, it, you shouldn't have to, because that's it, it can mean your death to have to do that, and yeah. The stamina function is really well done. You basically, you know how this works. You sprint, you jump, you wear down your stamina. When it's all worn down, you can still, you know, do the, the basic running. You cannot sprint anymore and your aim will be really bad. Like, yeah, like in real life, you know, you're out of breath so you can't hold the gun still. You, that, that takes effort and stamina. So, and, and what this does, that I haven't really seen in a lot of other games, is it really depends what position you're in for how fast the, you know, how fast it'll regenerate. So if you are, like, still regular running, it's gonna take a bit of time to get there. If you're standing still, a little less. Crouching, even better. Crouching and moving, a little less than crouching. Prone and moving, almost there, prone and not moving, very fast regenerate, much faster anyway than the, so you really want to think, you know, you don't want to just use up your stamina and you really want to think, okay, do I need my full stamina or do I need to get out of here whether I have full stamina or not? So that's a really great approach to that. The, the game seems to mostly, or, or is mostly based on your, your, your input, the, the things that the game will tell you. 
which aren't very many, will usually depend on your senses. And obviously, with it being a game, there are some of the senses, you know, touch and, and such that you can't literally be receiving the input from yet. And so, as such, the game will tell you with, with text or a diagram of such. But when you reload your gun, you'll be told the weight of the clip, if it's heavy or light. Because that's... you, you won't discard a, a clip unless it's literally empty. So if you reload without the clip being empty, you'll just put it back on your belt. And when you reload later, once you've gone through some more clips, you'll be back to that one. And yeah, the, the weight will determine how many bullets are left, because you don't have a bullet indicator. You don't know how many bullets are left in your current clip. Just like in real life, you can even try to count if you want, or, you know, so, so yeah, there's there's very much that. It's it's up to you. Do you want to try to count, or do you just want to try to you know go by feel? Do you, do you want to discover it in in the heat of the moment? All all of these have you know ups and downs to them. And the you know the the, the stamina has a diagram. You you have a, a body diagram on the fairly minimalistic and utilitarian HUD where. Yeah, you, you know, because you can feel whether you, you know, have a lot of stamina left or, you know, or not. And so the, the body diagram will show, it looks kind of like an overheated kind of thing. And, yeah, it shows you very clearly how much stamina you have left. And that, that same body diagram will also show wounds. And that's, again, you know, you can't, like, diagnose your wound just like that, but you can maybe basically feel, okay, I got hit in the leg, I got hit in the shoulder, you know, stuff like that. And bullets to the torso, especially from a rifle, will us excuse me, will usually kill with with just the one. The there there is a I, I don't remember the name, but one reviewer put it that the game really makes you feel the your frailty of a soldier and the power of the weapon in your hand because literally one shot can kill now the graphics are a tad plain and probably the worst are the very robotic movement animations and yeah I I sadly do have to say it's even considering when this came out maybe even the engine it's still not quite you know I mean I've, I've played a number of other in Red Tournament 2004 you know both both the main game and mo other mods and yeah it could be a tad better. And and there are also some glitches, like you know, textures will bleed into each other. These don't happen too often, but they do happen. Now, that does bring me nicely into the history behind this. The the group that made the original Red Orchestra mod for Unreal Tournament 2004 won the, you know, competition for that and then banded together, the, the modding team banded together and created Tripwire and then made this full game, you know, not requiring Unreal Tournament in 2004, but, you know, based on the, the engine. Now, the... Let's see, there are a few more things about the HUD that bear mentioning. The You have a compass, and that's literally... That and, and like... 
some some landmarks and debris and such are how you find your way around these large maps. You you have a map of the the level, but <laughs> it's not it's not necessarily gonna show that much, like, it'll show some buildings, some, some forest, you know, the, yeah, various things like that, but it's not gonna show everything, it, yeah, your, your objectives and whether or not they, you know, who they are currently owned by, and if it if they're currently being captured by one of the other of the teams, radio positions, resupply areas, rivers and bridges, and that's pretty much it. And the the, the resupply areas are also probably going to be familiar to a lot of players of this subgenre. Basically, you know, you go there and you stand there, over time it'll give you more clips for the gun guns you're currently holding. There is no healing, or no bandages and the like in this game. Health does regenerate over time, but it, it takes a little while and, you know, you, you really don't want to depend too much on that. Again, you can be killed with very few bullets. And, you know, if you're shot in the hand, you drop your weapon. If you're shot in the leg or, or foot, you move a lot slower, which, again, you know, okay, you didn't get killed by the bullet, but you'll want to get into cover, and that's not going to happen that fast if the bullet hit your leg. Now, the... Yeah, so so that pretty much covers the the you know the, the little bit of input you get. You do of course also have a counter for how many clips you have left, and that's you know you know what you start out with, and you can you know maybe basically feel the weight of the clips in your belt and such, and the. You are given a, an, a yeah, like I said, the, the, the map will show if an area is currently being captured. And I'm not entirely certain that they would quite have, you know, yeah, that's, that's going beyond what the, the realism would, could, could account for. But you do need a little bit more than just the realism to even make this, like, playable at all. And you can, of course, use voice communication, you know, be it by your own microphone or just, you know, you have the, the, the menu for selecting various ones. And again, you know, typical to this sort of thing. I, I would say that the, the main way this stands out from other you know, games that try to bring you the experience of this or that famous war, is that this is not only a first-person shooter, it is straight up a simulation game. Now, the... One of the things that can actually prove troublesome to, to you is just telling apart, telling friend and foe apart. Like, color can usually be used, but not always, because tank crewmen tend to wear gray regardless of what side they're on. And gray is typically the uniform color for Axis, the, the Axis forces. And then there are some levels where it won't be gray for Axis and yellow for Allied. And the icon, you know, the, the iron cross of the axis and the, you know, red star the, of, of the, the allied forces here are fairly small on, you know, the various vehicles and uniforms and such. 
And again, it's, it's that thing of if you have to ask, you're probably already dead. The game has some very nice effects. I've already mentioned the, the motion blur. The, the, there's also a very effective bloom effect with, you know, light will bleed in as the, the eye fully takes in how, how much light is coming from an area. And this can make for very effective hiding areas if, you know, yeah, if, you, if you're hiding near bloom, so you know that the bloom effect will literally put you behind that, that light, so yeah. And the yeah the 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 sky is usually gray. It's it, you know it's it's snowy or it has snowed or it's overcast. It's it's always quite bleak. And I I mentioned earlier about hiding tanks. The reason why that's a good idea is because a tank can very quickly be destroyed, be it by another tank, which, you know, might already be hiding in the area, or just an anti-tank trooper. I already mentioned the, the PTRD, or what it's called. There's, you know, someone experienced with it can make short work of a tank, and then there is the Panzerfaust, which is quite effective against tanks. And the the use of these of the anti-tank weaponry is again an area where you don't just get into it and that's it. The PTRD requires bracing on something. Now this can always be done when you're prone and you can just put it on the ground, or you can find, you know, like something, it, it could be a box, it could be, you know, I don't know sandbags or whatever they, they use to, you know, create a little, a little bit of cover. And once it's braced, there's basically, I think it's a 70 degree angle that it can turn on and if something moves beyond those, this this goes for the the machine gun as well, by the way. Be it you know the the machine gun you carry and the machine gun on an APC. Now the machine gun on the on the tank, I think yeah. There's there's the one that's from the driver, from yeah from his. Perspective, and then there's the coaxial, coaxial machine gun, which, as the name might clue you in, is basically attached to the 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 cannon of the tank, which, by the way, can also aim a little bit up and a little bit down, and so that one is of course entirely free to move, and it moves slowly, so just and and noisily. Now. The yes, so the the machine gun and PTRD, you need to brace them, and then you have the seventy degree angle. If you need to fire beyond those, you gotta you know unbrace it, you know, and turn around. And while you're doing that, you're probably getting killed by the guy who was outside of your field of view. So you want to think about when you're using these guns. And the and the machine guns in this game are they actually work as machine guns. If you are within a couple, you know, in the in the aiming the the iron sight aiming mode, if you're in within a couple of millimeters of it, you're dead, you know. And yeah, it not not several shots that no. If you get hit because it fires so fast, you know, we are talking a number of rounds per second, so there isn't any surviving that if it hits in your general area. Now, the... yes, the, the Panzerfaust has a... I think it's three settings, 
for maybe 30, 30, 50, and 80, I think, meters away. Straight for the win. And yeah, if, if you use the wrong setting, then you know, you'll shoot short or overshoot. And that's just it. And, and if you are shooting, you know, from further away or, well, you probably don't want to be shooting closer than 30 meters. Yeah, that sucks for you. You should get into a different position for that. And again, that's like it was in real life. Now, the this features a advanced ballistics or, or yeah advanced ballistics mechanics with you know both both for small arms and for tank rounds with bullet drop flight time and the the tank armor is also more realistic you know with penetration and deflection based on range and trajectory now the you can you you will also want to choose how fast you move and the you know how much you're showing of yourself very carefully because again if the enemy knows where you are and you're you know crawling around on the ground you might not get away in time and if you are you know if you're running and the enemy is just waiting for you in, in the basic area, then you're going to get killed. So, yeah. And it's... It can be extremely useful to flank, to, to go far around. Like, I mentioned how forests might be, you know, on the map. Some of them, if they aren't too thick, you can actually move through. And they will hide you quite well, so you can get into uh, a good vantage point. And yeah, it just means devoting that amount of time to it and figuring enough time for it, because if you don't quite make it in time, maybe they cover that angle, maybe if, if you were trying to get behind a tank because it has weaker armor on the, you know, yeah, bit behind. On, on that side, if, yeah, I'm trying to avoid saying on its behind or on its back side. I, I would not know about penetration of the, of the back side. Although according to the internet, the, some, some Germans are quite familiar with it, that was completely uncalled for. And I should apologize, but I will not. Yes, the, the, yeah, if you wanted to flank around to shoot from behind, maybe the tank has already moved in the time it took you to flank. So, yeah, it's, it's not unlike a game of chess. If the, you know, if the pieces were independent and the... <laughs> And, and there is no one with a full overview of exactly what's going on. Now, the... Another thing that, you know, is worth noting, the, the game might require you to camp for a while in order to actually get a good, you know, yeah, a good position. Or rather, if you are in a good position, you may want to camp rather than just constantly be moving around. Now, the... As, as another reviewer pointed out as well, this is rewarding, not relaxing. The attention to detail is tremendous. There are... I've, I've already mentioned a lot of these things. And while a, a number of the things in this game actually allow you to use them, you know, hide behind, you know, debris or, you know, use, you know, if, if there's literally a, a gun emplacement, you might be able to use it. But then there are some that 
are just there to heighten the realism, such as propaganda posters in, you know, the, the actual language. And, and also, when you give orders, I mean, it'll be subtitled, it'll be translated in text, but it'll, it will be in German and Russian when, yeah, when you communicate with... I do kind of wish that there was an option to get that in English, so you didn't always have to read, but, uh, yeah. Now, the... It's also well worth noting, Steam has two, and I'm, I'm not trying to, like, <laughs> sell Steam here, I'm just, these are free, these are, you know, no matter what platform you're playing this game on. Steam, completely for free, has two tutorial videos, one for infantry and one for tank, or, or vehicle rather, operation, and these are tremendously important to watch before because they really will give you a solid foundation for going into it. Now, I already mentioned some of the, of, of you know, resting guns, bracing guns against uh, you know, any gun can be rested on, or any rifle, I'm not sure handguns can, but they don't really need it. When you engage the iron sights mode, and this is the, the precision aiming of most shooters today, and where again this does really well is, it doesn't mean you get to zoom in. If, if you're not using binoculars, or a sniper rifle, you don't get to zoom just because you're engaging the precision aim, because that's again not real life. But when, when you engage that, if there is a, you know, a horizontal surface near you, you can brace the gun on that. And this will eliminate at least most of the you know, na the natural sway of the gun, because you're not holding it and trying to hold it still, you're resting it on something. However, the moment you move a bit, you may cease to rest from it, so it's, it's, it can be extremely useful, but you want to use it at the exact right time, and that's almost everything in this game. Almost everything is extremely useful, but you want to use it in the right way and at the right time. Now, the some guns can also be, or rather, yeah, that's the resting on the horizontal. Some can be braced against a vertical surface. Now, this isn't like the, the PTRD and the machine gun, because those need to be rested to be, you know, also breathing goes into it for regular guns. You know, he'll, the moment you engage iron sights, he, you know, he'll basically like take a deep breath, engage iron sights. If you don't fire within the next couple of seconds, handful of seconds, I, I don't know either how many seconds of the, you know, five seconds, let's go with that. I, I don't know how many seconds you could hold in a hand. Would, would that depend on the speed with which you grab them? I'm getting off topic again. If you don't fire within set amount of time, he will exhale and the gun will start swaying a bit from that. So again, and you know, bracing it eliminates that. But yeah, vertical surface for any gun that doesn't need to be rested on a horizontal surface, also quite possible. And again, the moment you actually move away from the you know, the place you were bracing the ends, which can mean just a little bit of movement. You no longer have that support. Now, the... Yes, to get more into the iron sights, the iron sights also mean you move a lot slower. Not just, you know, precision aiming, aiming often means you move slower, whatever. This, you really do move slower. And... Yeah, if, you know, you'll want to engage it, shoot, and then disengage it again. You can shoot from the hip, but in this, it's realistically, you know, un... 
you don't want to depend on it. It's it's not independent, but it's it's not a dependable way to to fire a, a weapon. And as is often the case, you will want to try to counteract recoil from the the submachine gun by you know th this is why you need to rest the these heavier weapons because you can't actually fire it from a standing position but yeah when when you're firing a submachine gun you'll want to try to move the sights down as you fire to to counteract the the recoil from it and and use it in short bursts and you know you you don't get to to have this nice little you know helpful counter strike e you know expanding or you know decreasing in size you know crosshair in fact this game has no crosshairs if if you engage the iron sights you're literally using the iron sights and if you're shooting from the hip there are no crosshairs because you're just kind of guessing you know you're pointing it in the the general direction if you're moving you probably can't cycle through your weapons you know you you especially if you're moving fast. So that's also something to take into account. Now, the... You can lean left or right, which is highly useful, and something I found that's fantastic. I... If, if you're, like, if you're ducking beneath some kind of cover, and you're basically just exactly covered by it, and you engage the iron sights, he will sit up a little, if, if positioned right. And sadly, there aren't that many places you can do this. I wish that... So basically, to, to brace a weapon against a horizontal or vertical surface, you have to engage the iron sights and be in the right position for it, and then you'll get, like, an icon You'll get an icon when you can, and then if you engage the iron sights, the, the icon will kind of whiten up, and that's, you know, that tells you that you did engage the, you know, you're, you're now bracing the weapon. I kind of wish that there was a function to kind of say, I want to be using something in this general area as some kind of bracing, but anyway, yeah. If you get into the great situation of it, if you're ducking, if you're crouched down, and then you engage the iron sights, he will literally just sit up just enough that you can aim out, and the, the gun will be braced, and then you can fire. And this is such a perfect little... you know, you're, you're completely hidden. And the moment you get up, you're, you're completely ready to fire. You've got the iron sights up, you've got the gun braced, so if you see someone, you can really quickly shoot them and then get back down because all you got to do is disengage the, you know, the iron sights. Now, with that said, this does have some of the best control over crouching and, you know, lying prone that I have ever seen. And along with the the bolt action requiring a separate, you know, press of the fire button. I would happily argue in a court of law that this should just be, you know, the way every game that has these, at least one of these two features, should be made. If you're crouching, you know, if, if you're walking and you want to crouch, you press crouch. If you want to get back up, you press crouch again. If you want to go prone, there's a separate button for that. You can go directly prone from standing up. You can be sprinting and diving into prone, and literally it will take a fraction of a second for you to go prone. So if you like spot an enemy and you're like, oh crap, press the button, you're immediately prone. You want to get into a crouch position, press the crouch button. You want to get back into a pr pr you know, prone, press prone. You want to stand up entirely from, you know, if you're lying prone, you want to stand up entirely, press prone. It's just, it's fantastic. I, I am fed up with, you know, I have had it, I have had it with these ridiculous, 
you know, oh, just hold down the button and you'll go prone, or press it to crouch. In my shooting games, I just, I, I am, I am this close to calling Sam, Sam Jackson to, to deal with it. And, and this just does it beautifully. It's, yeah. Now, the, you can cook grenades as you probably expect, and you can indeed overcook them and blow yourself up, so you can <laughs> take take a page from the more modern terrorist attack and, and you know, suicide bomb yourself. Oh great, now I'm going to get investigated by the NSA. Anyway, yeah, so you, you can do melee attacks, and this is again where they really get inspired and do something that not enough games do. Maybe some other games have done this, but I haven't really seen other shooter games do this. You can charge your melee attack. Again, you know, like in real life, if you want to do a quick jab with, you know, you'll basically be attacking with the gun butt, or if you've, if you've got a rifle, you may have a bayonet for it. You do have to manually attach that, but that takes like two seconds, and you can do that before you start moving into battle, just right after you've spawned, you know. Put it on, and then you can attack with the bayonet, and you can do a quick attack, or you can charge it, and do a more powerful one, you know. And, I know, you're, you're thinking, oh, that'll never be useful, just remember that you can do it, is all I'm gonna say. Now, the it's it's obviously it's faster than going into iron sights aiming and shooting and if you're close enough maybe it's useful you know the reloading is realistically slow the and and this goes for you know whether you're on foot or whether you're manning the you know the the gun of the tank and if someone isn't in the you know i think it's the gunner who who fires who reloads the the tank gun if someone isn't in, excuse me in the gunner's seat it's it's just not reloading plain and simple and yeah it of course has to reload for every single shot and a lot of tanks, you know, a, a number of the tanks will have two different rounds. Armor piercing and I think it, the other one is high explosive. There's also another armor piercing, but to, to, to just cover those two, armor piercing is obviously against other vehicles, and high explosive is against just infantry. Now... The basically, if you you can resupply a machine gunner, and this is just you know a click of a button. Th that does bring up. I do find that the controls could have been more streamlined. There are a few more rare buttons where I feel like a combination of keys, a la you know. Batman Arkham Asylum would really have been good, so you didn't have to remember so many keys. Again, especially with some of these being very rare. Like, Resupply Gunner is the only time you'll ever use that key. That There's no other function for that key. You know, whereas if you have... Well, for example, when you're in a, yeah, actually, I'm, I'm not entirely sure I can come up with an example in the game, but yeah, you know, they should be able to do the, yeah. Now, you can use explosive charges against tanks. And, and the explosive charges, otherwise, are to blow up specific objective, you know, item, or, yeah, subjects.
such as, you know, fences and... Yeah, you, you can blow your way into a new area. And you might need to. Now, the... Guess that. Now, yeah, the the using vehicles requires several people. You can also control it by yourself, but again, if you're trying to reload, at least you know one guy has to be in the gunner's seat to reload. Again, like in real life, a tank can hold three people: a driver, a gunner, and a commander, and the and and for for several of these positions and this goes for the APC as well there are different ways to look out from the tank and the more you can see using these the less the less covered you are like in real life and these are very nice and easy to use. You can't immediately switch from the most safe to the least safe. There, there will, you know, if there are three different positions, you have to go, you always have to use the middle one to go between the different ones. And it's literally just, it's the same way as you cycle weapons, you know, using the mouse wheel. And yeah, it's, you, you get used to it very fast, and then it's just, you know, if you're the least safe position, you may actually be able to look in a good 180 degree angle in front of the vehicle. And this will obviously make, you know, just looking around much easier, you know, orienting yourself. But anyone with a gun can, can take you out once you're that far up. And even the the slit that just allows the, the guy to look out, if you are a really good shot and maybe the tank isn't moving too much, you can shoot the guy from there. You can shoot him through the slit. So, yeah. Now, the... Yes, the, the APC allows for six people other than the driver and the gunner. And the APC has a machine gun mounted to it. And yeah, this is this is a highly effective way to very quickly get a lot of troops into a certain area and they they can't fire from within the APC, only the gunner can. And this is simply because they're too tightly packed, and you can literally see that when you're sitting there. And they actually have, you know, you might think it's kind of boring to just sit there. They have, that. that's where the movement animations are actually great. They will literally sit, I'm pretty sure I saw one guy puking out of fear, you know, like he put his head down and yeah. And again, not, not exploitive, not, not like ugly and nasty, but just it's it's there and you can extrapolate, you know, your imagination does a lot of it. Like also, I mentioned how it's not exploited. When you die yourself, you don't really see your death. You just, you kind of see, you, you look out your eyes as you fall over and then it goes to, you know, a, you know, the, the spectating mode until you respawn. And sure, you can look at your own dead body, but the game doesn't like shove it in your face. like you know, games that are more just for for the visceral fun of just blowing people up. Yeah, now I'm definitely on some international watch list. Anyway, yeah, so, yeah, they'll, they'll literally be sitting there just scared because they're gonna, they're already in, they're already on the front. They're already, you know, any, any second now, they could either be dead or in battle. And, you know, some will do, like, you know, the sign of the cross, and at least now I'll be, you know, put down as a, a right-wing terrorist, so, so maybe they won't 
care too much. I am just filling this up with, with political commentary. I really don't mean to be. And, yeah, in, in general, doing, you know, really showing the fear there. Now, there are 16 official maps and 10 community selected ones. And since the SDK has been released, you know, there, there are hundreds of maps out there. And this is where the, the glory of the Unreal Tournament engine comes into play. You can play a map you don't have just like that. Like, literally, it'll take a longer to load because it has to download the, the, the files for it, but that's it. You know, and that's also... Some people complain about long loading times. Other than when it has to download, I did not experience that. Now... Some levels are based entirely on vehicular combat, some entirely on infantry, and some are a mix of the two. And when it's a mix, coordinating both and using both well is vital. Because again, an anti-tank trooper can make really you know, can really easily take out the, yeah, the, the, the a, a tank, or, you know, an APC, an APC even easier, because it's not very heavily armored, it's not supposed to withstand heavy fire, it's just supposed to be able to drive fast and get people from point A to point B, so yeah, now, and, and at the same time, an anti-tank trooper is extremely vulnerable to anything other than, you know, maybe a tank. Well, even a tank, if it knows where he is. But, yeah, you know, so... Because everyone is specifically for their purpose. You know, if it's... If you have a rifle or some machine gun, you might be supposed to just going in and trying to take out as many and trying to keep yourself alive. If you've got anti-tank weaponry, focus on vehicles. If you're a sniper, find a good place to camp, and so on. Now, I think that covers everything, but yeah, it's just... you get completely lost in the game, and it's... For better or for worse, it really puts you right there. And if 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 you play it not necessarily knowing what war is like, I wouldn't rule out it could completely yeah put you against war quite quite effectively, you know. Just, just like watching, you know, All Quiet on the Western Front, or, or similar. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.